Hey guys, it's Chelsea Messenger with Picks and Parlays. We're talking NFL action here. Bucks and Panthers. It's Masters Week, which means we have a nice little promo for you guys. Use the code MASTERS for 20% off the entire site at picksandparlays.net. Bucks are minus five. The total is 50 and a half. This one opened at 47, and that total has risen. And the Bucks opened at minus six and it's gone down a point. We've got Lee joining us, and Lee has been on fire when it comes to NFL picks. His premium plays are a perfect 10-0 and on the year, so you might want to listen to what he says. Uh, Lee, what do you got for us when it comes to Bucks and Panthers? Well, I'm going to have to side with the under in this game, uh, mainly uh, value. It opened 47 and a half, like you, like you mentioned. It's been bet up to 50. So I like the added value uh, in the number. And I, I think the overreaction is to Carolina's game last week against Kansas City and Tampa Bay's defense giving up 38 last week to the Saints. Carolina put up 31 against the Chiefs last week. But prior to that, they had averaged 20 points per game in their four previous games. And two of those games were against the Falcons, who are 23rd in the NFL in points allowed at 28 points per game. So I, I don't think Carolina is going to put up huge numbers here against a Tampa Bay defense that's ninth in points allowed per game this season at 22.6. They're coming off that horrible, uh, embarrassing showing against the Saints. They gave up 38 in that game. Uh, in their previous four games, the Bucks had allowed 18.25 points per game, so even less than their season average. And that came against Green Bay and Las Vegas, uh, who they allowed 10 and 20 points to. And those two teams are much better offensively than Carolina. Tom Brady and Tampa Bay should bounce back here. Yes, they only scored three points in their, in their previous game. Uh, but their offense really isn't as good as it's been hyped this season. Uh, they're 22nd in total offense, total yards per game, 16th in passing, and 30th in rushing. What's led to the Bucks' success offensively is they are first in takeaways defensively, which has led to short fields, short scoring opportunities for the offense. These two did teams met earlier this year. They combined for 48 points. The total was 47. Second meeting of the same season uh, in, a, in a division rivalry game. Uh, in the last four times that's happened in this situation between these two teams, the under is 3-1. and one. So I would have to lean towards the under here in this game. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting dynamics to this one. First of all, being a division game and a division rivalry game matchup here. Uh, usually I like divisional dogs, especially at home. And that's where I'm leaning. I'm leaning towards the Panthers in this one. And some key numbers, Teddy Bridgewater, 16-2 and two against the spread when he's an underdog of at least three points. And he is also coming off a nice little game where he threw for 310 yards against a pretty solid Chiefs defense and actually kept that game close. And I expect that to continue here. At least the Panthers are getting points. I don't think the Bucks are going to be quite as bad as they looked on uh, primetime TV against the Saints. I mean... Their offense couldn't get anything going. I can't believe they didn't even score a touchdown. He has all those weapons. Uh, Tom Brady does, and you can't even score from first and goal on the one, I think. I can't remember what yard line it was, but they had all kinds of chances to score a touchdown, and it was just terrible to watch. But uh, any other key factors you're looking at or key matchups that you're looking at when it comes to this Bucks and Panthers game? Well, I agree with you. I would take the underdog in Carolina uh, in this game if I had to. The one stat that scares me, and you and you kind of just touched on it, Saints are one of the top teams in the NFL in sacks per game, and, and they got to Tom Brady quite often last week, whereas Carolina, I think, is 24th in sacks uh, per game. So if Carolina can't get to Tom Brady and, and let him stand back in the pocket and throw to all his wide receivers and, and, and all the weapons he has offensively, then it could be a long game for Carolina. But uh, I'm with you. I would have to take the points in this game. Public will be on uh, Tampa Bay, so I always side with not being on the public side. So I would take Carolina at home in the points. I think you hit it right on the, the head with Brady. Can the Panthers get some pressure on Brady? Because that's when he really breaks down. In the Bucks' six wins, Brady has 17 touchdowns and only two interceptions and only four sacks. But in their losses, Brady has only three touchdowns five interceptions, and nine sacks. So I think that's pretty telling uh, if you get some pressure on Tom Brady that he's a bit of a different quarterback. And also one final note, uh, they're not expecting Christian McCaffrey to play. He is out with a shoulder injury as of taping. So 
also a factor for the Panthers. I don't think it'll matter too much for that Panthers offense because Mike Davis has filled in admirably. And, you know, they've played without him for most of the year. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for our Bucks and Panthers talk here on Picks and Parlays. As always, great stuff from Lee, who is 10-0 in the year. Premium Picks, had to repeat that. Lee, thanks for joining us. (laughs) 